made this video as an extension of my previous uh, video or tutorial on uh, creating a biochar retort, a two drum retort. Um, so the idea is it's really the same concept as previously with the, the 60 litre drum and the 25 litre drum inside. drum, uh, 25 litre drum, small drum. But the, the, one of the issues with that retort, um, initially you had to stop st stockpile the kind of timber around the outside so it's all the right kind of size to fit in, in the gap between the, the inner drum and the outer drum. So that involved a little bit of preparation and um, obviously because it's kind of like a closed vessel once it's burning is a little bit of work involved in to kind of make sure it, it transitions from that initial burn on top of the drum to kind of work its way down. The problem, it's not, it's a, it's more something to be aware of than a, than a problem, but um, if the wood's too big, it'll take too long to burn, and if it's at different sizes, it'll burn differently from one side to the other. So the wood has to be sort of consistent profile and if there's lots of small timber as it burns it tends to ash up and it, it blocks the air hole so it's not getting the, the draw of air through and so I've had a couple of burns where you had to kind of agitate the drum just bang on the outside of it just to kind of get it to, to move through and the one thing I noticed is when the wood gas was starting, starting to or the wood was starting to off gas that transition between the temperature not being quite high enough to for the gas to to ignite and as it starts to ignite you, you'll get a bit of a pop and a bang and you, you'll notice some sort of sparks and ash as it dislodges around the edge of the, that container and then it starts to go into retort mode it's more kind of efficient so what I th thought um, to make this more efficient and there's different ways of doing it but the problem with this retort is when it's finished you've really got to take the whole thing tip it over and it's cold when you start it again you, you don't have that continuous sort of fire operating which is a bit of a shame because once you've got the fire going and it's got some heat in it it would be nice just to be able to swap out that inner drum and, and, and just add a bit more fuel to, to make another batch. So two ways of insulating this retort and what I've shown here is just using house bricks just because they're readily available they're, they're cheap you can often them buy drive sets or just have bricks or someone's got a garden wall and they've taken it down and they don't want to pay for a skip so they sort of put it on a local sharing group are they any use to anyone and um, obviously you get broken bricks but if there's solid bricks and they're reasonably free of mortar especially in older properties where they're using lime mortar that the bricks clean up really easily and you can, can reuse those so what I thought about doing is, is kind of make a, more of a rocket stove and it's quite hard to see in this sort of isometric projection but um, what I've shown here this is a 800 millimeter long piece of um, steel square box section I've just scoured it 150 millimeter square and I've, I've shown this with the, the ends cut off at a 45 degree angle so you could do that with an angle grinder um, it doesn't actually need to be steel but it's quite convenient and it makes a kind of shoot um, what I've shown here, this, this little panel is like a kind of little lid. So the feedstock to, to fuel the burn in this kind of rocket stove, you'd slide timber down this chute. You could light it in two ways. You could either take, take the retort off, start a little fire in here, place the retort back on, possibly without the end drum, and then you'd continue feeding stock down here and obviously you've got the this without well the space around that inner drum is like a kind of flue and then you've obviously got the, the chimney the flue itself as well so that's very tall so overall the from from the base that could be about eight or nine feet tall so you've got a massive kind of stack massive root of chimney and then you're, you're you're fueling the wood through here but what I've shown here is this little um, divider so what I've it's a kind of concept but what I'd like to do is put the feedstock in here and you're closing that off so the wood is burning from the base it's heating up this chamber as well 
so this is uh, like a rocket stove as well so it's a gasifying stove because it's close off to air and then the second inlet here is just purely for, for air to pass through so it would be more sort of self-feeding because you can actually put the feedstock down here and um, rather than lining it all around, around the outside but obviously having that direct heat from the burn on the outside of that drum initially it's going to be a lot hotter but I'm, I'm kind of I just wanted to make it simpler so what I, I envisioned is having this this brick part set into the ground so the top brick is level with the ground level so you've got the insulation from those bricks as well you could use some um, refractory bricks or fire bricks or um, they normally say you don't use concrete blocks near a fire because they can crack but obviously this is just something out on the allotment so I'm not too worried about cracking and um, I've made similar things for, for casting in um, aluminium before and using just regular house bricks with full stair and then that was getting up to temperatures to, to melt aluminium so that was really hot. What I noticed as well the house bricks were actually um, glassifying as well, they're vitrifying and, and turning into a to sand and, and aggregates of vitrifying and turning into glass so it gives you an indication of the temperature but I was just using um, coke for that so it's kind of like a it's quite interesting obviously with enough oxygen you can you can kind of melt iron and, and metals as well so obviously the temperatures involved in, in charcoal um, I'm really working around 450, 460 degrees Celsius, so it's hot enough to, to get the steel to, to glow red hot, but it's not going to melt any of the metal work itself. Um, so, I've just shown the, the bricks, so it's just two bricks and a half brick, just to make a square, and then I've, I've left out a brick from the, the lower three courses as well. I've shown it on that one, but what I'd, I'd leave out. Um, oh, I've got on this one. Yeah, I've just got a, a half brick here, a half brick here, and I've, I've left an opening on, on that, that that side. It's, it's not quite in the centre, but if anything, um, I, th I think having it slightly off centre gives you a, a bit more of a circulation around in this chamber as well, so that you can get kind of vortexes around there. It might be interesting putting some sort of um, uh, vortex kind of generator in, in the flue itself, which can be something as simple as a, a circular disc, which is got a couple of slots and then it's almost like twisted into a, a sort of helix so it's like a kind of fan blade but it, it just kind of speeds up the, the circulation and once you've got more air and once the flue is all hot and up to temperature you, you'll get much more efficient burn and as it's burning it, it produces more oxygen and it, 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 it feeds through more air as well. To, to get this started what you could do is actually run like a 12 volt fan or even like a a compressor, a um, car tire, something run off a battery just to get a little bit of air. But what I found is the computer fans, they're known as delta fans, they come in different sizes, but the sort of 80 millimeters or 120 millimeter fans are quite good. And I found a, a spotlight fitting which was for the old um, incandescent spotlight bulbs where it had. I think it was about 150 millimeters, and it went down to about 50 millimeters where the, the, the fitment, where the where the bulb goes in, and I, I cut that down and made like a kind of funnel, and then you can connect the, the fan unit up to that, and then just run a piece of vacuum cleaner pipe or something like that, just the aluminium tube rather than the, the corrugated flexible hose. And with this, it might be an idea. I, I don't know. Possibly you could have that as as a one single chamber. For the fuel feedstock and then you've obviously got to kind of factor in the fact that that, that opening you really want the, the intake to be the same size as the exhaust for the, the flue as well so it's got that nice sort of it hasn't got low pressure areas where it's it's pulling in more air than, than it can exhaust or it, it's it's exhausting more air than it can kind of pull in but it, with this thing it would just be loose laid bricks and you could build this above the ground and then once you're happy with the arrangement you could just dig a small hole and set it in but the idea with this is once that fire's going and it, in terms of maintaining or managing that 
retort that's exactly the same as the other one so you can lift the lid off you can kind of look and see what's happening as you see you can get an idea of the wood gases you'd still have the the openings around here as well which which would in effect be like almost like secondary air but then you can that gives you the, the option of, sort of micromanaging that fire as well so you can kind of add feedstock around here but what i thought about doing is setting this below the ground level putting a couple of bits of slate on those corners here and then maybe even mounding up some soil around that as well so it made a nice airtight seal so then it, it's just like a kind of big rocket stove so um obviously with this construction you'd you'd, ne you'd need a piece of steel bar or something under that that course of blocks or a piece of angle a couple of little bits of angle line on each side and the inner drum would need some means of support as well but what I'd suggest is when you when you cut the, the top of this drum out the idea of this one is you'd be able to put the outer drum has actually got the, the, the top and the bottom cut off as opposed to this one where it's just let's get that one through so you can see yeah this one was sitting on those four little pieces of angle the little offsets just to allow a little bit of air space with some sort of off gas but on this one you'd need a couple of bits of reinforcing bar or a bit of um, welded wire mesh over the top of the whole thing just so that can sit on here but because you've got this little kind of brick kiln once once those bricks are hot they're going to retain a lot of a lot of heat so it would be like a kind of big fire pit and then you're feeding it in through that rocket stove. So I think that would make, really make that much more efficient. And because that's just a kind of a, a barrel, like a sleeve, you could even use a, a four-size oil drum. And then this, this drum, you obviously need to put another half brick to get the width. But then you, you could you could quite easily modify that for a larger retort and, and not have to do any any building work or re redo that the base of that stove. And the nice nice thing about this as well is if you want to do any cooking or Go to like a kind of um, what they call them the um, those sort of um, I don't know, I think what they're called now the um, cast iron pots that you can kind of put, put bread in. You can actually do pizzas and things like that on on that. And use it as a stove to, to cook on, and obviously you've got quite a big grate on there, so you could boil water and you could use that. And what would be quite nice about this is that it could stay in the ground all year round and you could just cover it with this paving stone when you're not using it. And then when you want to use a retort, all you've got is this um, oil drum, which is just like a kind of like a cylinder with the top and bottom cut out and that would just sit on the top. So having the, the having this below ground level obviously insulates that because you've got lots of um, sort of thermal mass around this and it's not subject to, to wind so it's not going to be cooling down. So I think once that fire's going, you could quite easily take that, that oil drum away, and it might be an idea just to bolt or rivet some handles on it, just to make it easy to, to handle. And then what I'd suggest with this inner drum is where you've taken that lid off, drill a couple of holes through, or maybe th three or four holes in, in the sides, just so you can get a piece of, of wire or something like that and, and push it through, or just a, a nut and bolt just so you can flip that over and you haven't got to worry about the, the timber falling out which is probably a good thing to do anyway but on the other one because it was sort of sitting on these supports it was a little bit easier to set up before you got the fire going but this one would be sort of sitting on those those bars so I think it makes more sense to and obviously if it drops out it's only going to fall out of 40 millimeters or something like this but with this you've got a big, big kind of stove underneath so it needs to be retained in there the other thing I thought about doing, I probably, I don't know if it needs it or not. Yeah, I think if you've got handles on the outside, you can lift that one out off, and then you've just got this this drum, so that'd be quite easy just to get a couple of big pieces of wood or something like that, and then just pick it up. I was, I was thinking about fixing handle on there, but obviously a fixed handle, it's got to be sort of gas tight as well. Um, you, if you've got nuts and bolts, you could probably bolt a couple of handles to the sides just to make it easy to, to manoeuvre. And what I'd suggest with this plate, if you if you make that plate, I've shown it on this diagram, like the outside of this 60 litre drum is 400 millimetres, and I've shown this as 420 millimetres. But if you make that plate, it doesn't need to be round, you, but you could scale that plate so it it's, will fit a larger oil drum as well. And then at some point, if you wanted to upgrade this in the future, you, you wouldn't have to remake that plate. But because this was quite 
it's separate modules rather than this one, which is all as all as one. You kind of burn it, and, and once it's all up to temperature, this one gives you a little bit more finesse in terms of how to to maintain that fire. And then when you disassemble these things, well, you've got the outer drum and then the inner drum. It, it it's more separate units rather than this one. Is obviously you can't take that off from the other one because of the fires all around it. I don't know how this would transfer into um, as far as getting into the same temperature or the temperature into that inner drum as fast as, as this system obviously where this one has got the, the drum is kind of being cooked. There's a fire all around it but what you could do if there was a sort of um, welded wire mesh on top of this and uh, the drum sat on, sat on there rather you could, you could actually to fire it up similarly, similarly to this one, but obviously you'd only need a small amount of wood to get it going, and then you can continually feed stock through through the, um, the rocket stove part as well. But um, this, yeah, this this doesn't need to be metal, and um, it would be better if it was made out of brick. But I think when you're doing things like this, if you can get enough cut of steel pipe, it's much easier to sort of set it up, and then you might think, oh, that those that isn't quite large enough and you might want to put another flue in it or something like that so it, it's quite easy to, to build this but when you if you're setting this into the ground you can actually set block work all around it and you can sit sort of half bricks underneath as well to s support it and then once that's up to temperature it would um, it would help to retain that heat but once there's a big fire going in that, that that would be much more efficient than this system where it's it's there's an element that's all hit or miss if it actually takes and initially this one would be pretty much guaranteed because you've got that big extended some flue on the outside so it's it's already going to be really burning efficiently and burning hot right from the sort of get go but um yeah the other thing to, to consider as well if you can buy it or pick up some some sort of corrugated roofing sheet ideally galvanized as opposed to sort of pvc coated um i'd suggest insulating this drum possibly with with rock wall or something like that, so if you can get 50 millimeter rock wall around this, and then just sort of strap, you can use um, some sort of builder's band or something like that, just some galvanized band, and then strap it around the outside. It's kind of like looks a bit like Meccano. It's got holes punched every inch or so, and then you can just put a couple of bolts, put it tight, and then that would really insulate that jacket. And likewise, if this plate was larger, then that would actually cover over the top top of the the insulation as well. Um, obviously with insulation you've got to keep it dry though so that's obviously you, know, you can keep it in the shed when you're not using this otherwise it would get really heavy and really soggy and it would also really rust out the metal drum. It doesn't need to be doesn't even need to be um, round you can actually kind of panel that in with, with, with some sort of sheet. But I think if you can insulate that drum and then you've got that stored sort of residual heat radiating out from those bricks I think that would be really efficient it's more like a kiln rather than this one's just like a kind of top lit up draft sort of burn and when the outside of this is around about 460 degrees 450 something like that if you've got that insulation then you're going to need a lot less feedstock to, to maintain that temperature because you're not losing the heat around the outside anywhere near as much what I did notice as well when I was using a a small sort of chimney made from a colour gas bottle underneath so I was just playing around with different ideas and I had the the internal flue um, which was I think it's three inch pipe going through the inside and then I rather than an inner drum I had the, the biochar loaded around the outside because the biochar is in effect insulating that that flue and then I had like a twin wall flue as well the inner flue was really really glowing the whole the whole length of that that flue and I don't know, the, the exhaust the fire seemed to me a darker kind of red as well as opposed to the Elmon which is more of an orangey kind of red, it really seemed to be much more intense, much more sort of fierce. But I, I'll give this a try, I'll pick up another couple of drums, probably a full size drum just to experiment with a 60 litre and a, a 200 litre just to sort of see how it scales and, and see how it works with the brickworks. But because the brickwork is reclaimed you know, there's not an, it, a 
great deal of financial investment at all. Maybe just picking up a link on off cut of, of steel pipe or something like that, and a couple of um, button hinges you could either bolt or rivet it or weld on just to make a little, little door for that. You could even be clever and put a little damper on this. I don't think it would need it, but at the end of the burn, it, if you close that off, then there wouldn't be any air to that fire, and you could actually extinguish the fire without having to, to do any putting air into it, which would be quite nice. Uh, yeah, that, that's all, all for now. So this is a bit more of a refined version of the initial kind of retort, but um, that worked well. So I think it's it's, it's worth persevering and um, a similar size, which I, I think is quite convenient. It's it's not hugely unwieldy to, to move around. Some of these ones I've seen on online, they're, they're using full size oil drums, and they've even got a similar kind of stove to this but they're, they're stacking those drums on, on top of each other and it looks very tall and it looks quite precarious and top heavy so I think this is quite nice and if I set this into the ground as well it keeps it quite low profile. The other thing I was thinking of doing is um, a washing machine cylinder is will fit over the outside of the of the um, the 60 litre drum so I could actually extend that and depending on how, how far I wanted to dig I could actually set that in and then use the washing machine cylinder as a retainer so then you could actually have earth around this out also and so then that would really insulate that and the only bit above ground which you could actually have maybe 300 millimeters of that part which would be very easy to insulate and you could just lag that much much simpler than having the, the whole thing but obviously Build something like this. The init this 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 version is good because then you can kind of you can optimize it to, to the kind of materials you've got available in terms of what sort of um, air size holes and what sort of size inlets and what, and what size flue. If you've got lots of really dry hardwood, it will burn a lot kind of hotter than, than wet or sort of soft wood. If your wood is sort of old pallet wood, it might be have quite a high moisture content, so you might need a little bit more maintenance management and maintenance to get that fire to keep it going you might need to just kind of um, shake it around a little bit so yeah once you're happy with using a smaller retort I'd, I'd consider something like this because I think that in terms of the, the amount of feedstock it's going to be a lot less enough but you're going to be burning a lot less timber so overall you're going to be getting more biochar from, from the same amount of um, wood waste well I haven't built this yet I, I've built a smaller version and um, the only problem there wasn't a proper flue and I had a kind of metal work inside and it was an old um, sort of gas sort of hob thing which is uh, it still had the gas fitting attachment so I didn't that was kind of blocking up the, the feedstock from going through and because I, I made the flue out of bricks as well it was quite sort of square there wasn't this nice sort of self-feeding kind of 45 degree sort of shoot going on. Well, I've, I've seen um, the James Hookway retort, and the problem with that is it's, it's kind of welding, and there's a lot more metal work involved. And I think if you can do something like this with a few bricks, and then, and then insulate it and use that thermal mass from the soil as well, it's going to be more efficient, so it's going to be better. And obviously, with a kind of rocket stove, if you've got lots of welding, and it's going to it's going to wear out, and it's going to burn burn through in the end, and it's going to rust through. So it's quite nice to where where all the, the the real heat is happening if you can use bricks or refractory bricks or, or fire bricks and like that it's, it's going to be much more longer lasting and then the, these bits it's just the inner drum which will kind of wear out but then if, if you can find those locally you can you can keep a few of those in stock so when one rusts out you can possibly you can even use it as a as a plant container and then when, it, when it's too rotted out for that then you can either just sort of take it to the um, local civil means eat point and they can recycle it and turn it into more steel containers so it's quite quite efficient that way so what I like to think when you're looking at sort of permaculture as well if people sort of say about using timber and, and how long will timber to take to rot down then I kind of think well if you can build something out of it first then it might have five six years of use as a compost bin or something like that it's already pretty rotted and then you could use it for fugal beds or then you could use it in a in a compost bin but I wouldn't say I'll get fresh virgin grade materials and use electricity or petrol to, to shred them and then put them in a compost bin where it's going to take long for the compost to, to break down or 
you could use that that wood chip on paths, so you could use it on a path for three years, and and, no, and then you could put it into the compost. So you, each stage of this, you you can think, oh, this has got different uses. You can use this and this and this, or you could use the bricks, or you could use bricks for edging, or if you want to change the way you the setup of your lot, might be like some bricks left over. So it, what I find is, well, if if someone's got bricks locally and they're they're nice kind of bricks, what I do is I'll pick them up just make a stack of them neatly along the side of the allotment just as an edge and then when I finally need them I can have their own hand so you've got that flexibility be sort of <laughs> it's always the case you can find materials when you, you don't actually need them at that point but then when you actually go out and sort of think oh I need one of these drums or, or the bit of flu pipe you'll, you'll never see it but you can be driving along and count this time there's, there's be a drum or, or pile of bricks or something but yeah so I think I think it's I wouldn't I'm not sort of suggesting kind of hoarding materials. Obviously, there's some materials have got lots and lots of uses, and other materials are they, they come across all the time anyway. But there's only sort of few applications. But but things like bricks, um, joists, and scaffold boards, floorboards are always good. You can always make raised beds, or um, I don't know, put the sort of um, gravel boards around the bottom of a poly tunnel or something like that. So it's it's a good idea to keep those, those sort of materials on hand. Um, there'll always be plant supports and things like that where you need you need timber or to shore up a fence or a compost bin or something like that. So it's a good idea to have a little area where you can kind of think, oh, I'll, I'll need a few pavement slabs at some point. So you drive past them, someone's got some work in the front garden, they've got slabs that are available, it's, it's worth picking them up and even if you've just stacked them on on edge, then they're, they're there in the future. But I think this will work quite well, I can't see any, any real issues. Um, yeah, it's just really get, getting that opening for the air inlet, or the air inlet here to kind of balance it with the, the flu. But I think what I do is I'll build it above ground level, get it so I'm happy with it, and then I'll once I refine the design, I'll, I'll, I'll sink it into the ground a bit more. It might, possibly, it might be worth when you're building this thing, having a, a few extra kind of um, air passages going into here as well, so it, you can kind of control the burn a little bit more as well. Even if there's one here, it might be worth having one on the other side as well. I think I'm just short of uh, 30 minutes, so that's, that's probably about enough for now. Anyway, thank, thanks for watching. Uh, I've got another couple of ideas and I'll, I'll post similar drawings of those on uh, YouTube as well.